the problem of evil is the problem of why Satan is given so much freedom to harm the world when God has the right and power to throw him in the pit. God will one day do away with Satan altogether. We see this in Revelation 20 and 3. There will be no injustice to Satan. Nor will it be unjust for God to do it today. So why doesn't he, in view of much misery that Satan causes? You see, the devil roams like a roaring lion, a devouring lion, to destroy faith. He makes people sick and diseased. He tempts people to sin. He blinds the minds of unbelievers. He takes people captive to do his will. He kills and steals. And one day God will stop him from doing this. One day God will also judge those who participate in sin with him. But the question that's been on people's minds is why doesn't God stop him now? You see, could it be that there is a chance that the devil and his angels will repent? Is God giving them time? Absolutely not, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible teaches they cannot be brought back. Simply unredeemable. Jesus said that the eternal fire has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Just think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Just think about this. If God is going to do this to Satan, what, what might he do to you? If Satan is the one that's causing evil, then what happens to those who participate in evil? Jew confirms this when he says that the fallen angels are being kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Why then does God tolerate Satan? The key is that God aims to defeat Satan in a way that glorifies not only his power, but also the superior beauty and worth and desirability of his son over Satan. You see, God could simply a short raw power and snuff Satan out that would glorify God's power, but it would not display so clearly the superior worth of, Sat of, of, of what Satan did. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, what God wants us to understand is that all power is unto him. He is the creator. And so again, that would glorify God's power, but it would not display so clearly the superior worth of Jesus over Satan. That will be displayed as Christ defeats Satan by his death and then by winning superior allegiance from the saints over the lives of Satan. You see, central to this plan is that God defeats Satan in stages through the work of Christ. This is the reason why Satan does not want people. Come on now, are you there? Come on, I'm going to a step higher. This is the reason why Satan does not want people to understand the gospel. This is the reason why Satan wants people to go away from God, to shut down anyone or interrupt anyone who is preaching the word of Christ. And so the Bible says, so let your light shine. So let your light shine. God bless you. God bless you. 
And so that's the reason why when the gospel is being preached, Satan is upset. He does not want the light to shine. The light will bring people from darkness to Christ. Because people are stumbling in their darkness. They're walking around, stumbling around. The central plan to this is that God defeats Satan in stages through the work of Christ. Paul says that when we were forgiven all our trespasses by Christ's death on the cross, God thus disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Colossians 2 and 15. This was the first stage of Satan's defeat. This is what Satan doesn't want people to understand today. He doesn't want you to understand that he is already defeated. You see, as much as people don't want the preaching of the gospel, God puts his hand down on it. Satan wants people to think God is not real. He's the God. But you see, how was he defeated by the cross? Let's talk about this. Because the lethal weapon of soul-destroying sin and guilt is taken out of Satan's hand. He is disarmed of the single weapon that can condemn us. Unforgiven sin. Unforgiven sin. Sin. Unforgiven sin. We see this in 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. Oh, death, where is thy victory? Come on now, I'm going to a step higher. Oh, death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Without sin and law to condemn us, Satan is, def is, a, is a defeated foe. He is disarmed. Glory unto the Most High God. He is disarmed. Remember when Satan is trying to use you to commit sin, he is disarmed. Christ has triumphed over him. Not yet by casting him into hell and nullifying his influence on earth, but by letting him live and watch while millions of saints find forgiveness for their sins and turn their back on Satan because of the greater glory of Christ. That is the second stage of defeat. The conversation, the conversion of people by the power of the gospel of Christ. The power of the gospel of the cross. Jesus says to Paul that his mission to the Gentiles is to open their eyes so that they may turn from the power of Satan to God. Acts 28 and 18. Come on now. This is what happens when God removes the blindness caused by the devil and gives us the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. This is what people today need. But instead, people are looking for, uh, uh, let me get that shot. This enables people to see the ugliness of Satan. And so Satan whispers in people's ears, don't listen to that man. Don't, don't, don't read the Bible. Don't, don't, don't try to find God. He don't want you. He don't care about you. That's the reason why bad things are happening in your life now. That's why the reason why you can't make it in life. Because God never cared about you. That is what Satan is saying to each and every one of us. Trying to encourage us to never listen to God. Never turn to God. That you are okay without God. That is a lie. Don't believe the lie of Satan. 
He is sent out. He, he goes out as a devouring lion seeking to kill, steal, and destroy you. He does not like you. He does not like the atheists. He does not like the Satanists. He does not like the agnostics. He does not like the Christians. Satan doesn't care about the Muslims. He don't care about the Indians. He don't care about the, the, the Catholic. He hates all of us because of one thing. Come on now. You're made in the image of God. When Satan looks at you, he sees the image. That's why he wants us to commit sin. That's why he wants us to fight against one another. Divide one another. Come on now, like the light is being shined in the darkness. Can you see? Now is the time to see, ladies and gentlemen. Now is not the time to ignore the word of God and say, I'll check back in later. You may not have later. Come on now, turn me up some. You may not have later. You may not see tomorrow. I know plenty of people here want to see tomorrow. Satan doesn't want you to live, period. To live as unto Christ, to live unto Christ is to live eternal. Satan doesn't want you to make it. He never wanted you to make it. He didn't want you to wake up this morning because he knew that you was going to be coming through here later on today and hear this word of God. Satan knows that someone is going to give their life to Christ. That's why he works so hard. It's not about if God is real. That's not even the question. That's out of the equation. It's, are you going to hear the word of God and change your mind? Are you going to hear the word of God and repent? He hates repentance. Satan hates repentance. He hates it when someone gives their life to Christ. On the day that I came to God, Satan was pissed. He was mad. He's like, I just lost my number one sinner. I just lost someone that was helping my kingdom. That's why God today is calling each and every one of us because God wants you to see the light. He wants you to see his love, his joy, the things that you can have. A lot of people are suffering because they would rather stay in sin. Come on now, no, I know I'm telling the truth. He would rather you stay in sin, Satan, so that you don't see God's love, so that you will curse God or anything that has to do with God, anything righteous, that you will curse it. That you would say, F that man. I don't care about him. But God wants you to hear the word so that you can be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above every name. It's not that we need a new mayor. It's not that we need a new governor. It's that we need Jesus. We need Christ. Because Christ comes to set the captives free. He's the one. Power over death. Jesus said to Paul that his mission to the Gentiles is to open their eyes. That's what God wants to do. God wants to open your eyes so that you may turn from the power of Satan to God. No, 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 no. God, Satan is not a God. God is God. He's the creator. This is when, this, this is what happens when God removes the blindness caused by the devil, gives us the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. This enables people to see the ugliness of Satan and the beauty of Christ so that their choosing Christ glorifies not only God's power. Come on now, are you there? God's power, not only God's power, but Christ's superior beauty and worth over Satan. This way of defeating Satan is a costly triumph. Because Christ suffered. And the world suffers. But God's values are not so easily reckoned. If Christ destroyed all demons now, which he could do, his sheer power, his sheer power, would be seen as glorious. But his superior beauty and worth would not shine so brightly as when God's people 
Renounce the promises of Satan, trust in Christ's blood and righteousness, and take pleasure in the greater glory of Jesus over Satan. Because what, what does Jesus do? He set the captive free. He'll, he'll, he'll set the prostitute free. She's no longer selling her body. He'll set the drug dealer free. He's no longer selling drugs. He will set the, uh, 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 the addict, the drug addict free because that addict is no longer controlled by the devices of Satan. That's what God wants. Isn't that a good thing, ladies and gentlemen? That's what God wants. So where do we get this? We hate God. We don't want to hear God. Why? Is it because that God tell you lying is wrong, stealing is wrong? It's the truth. God bless you, man. It's good to see you again. It must be. This means that when our we're treasuring Christ above all the promises of sin and Satan is part of the triumph that God designs for this age. But listen to this. This is just one more example which provides the evidence of the truth in each and every detail of the words that I am speaking right now. Because God wants us to be set free from sin. That's the purpose. And so this is happening today so that those with eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to understand, would see and know the truth of what I am singing right now. So you will not have an excuse when you stand before the judgment seat of the Most High God. That is the creator of the heavens of all earth. The creator of the heavens. Do we have a possible ex explanation for when we stand before him? Because he will step forward in all of his glory and ask you to give an account as to why you chose to be part of the great hypocrisy. Why you chose to believe the lies. Why you chose to fall away. Why you willingly worship the things that are not of him. Why you chose to live in sin? Is there anyone that's going to have a valid excuse? Why we chose to stand against God? Stand against his word. His will. Because so many today think that they have a license to sin against God. God loved me, so I'm going to continue living against him because he loved me. Absolutely not. It's that moment that you will not be able to say, oh, I didn't know. You do know. You do know today. You do hear the word of God today. You just choose to ignore God. That's a choice that God doesn't want us to make. Because when we turn against God, we're turning against life. We're saying, oh, man, forget this life. Thank you for listening to our current Reality Street ministry, founded on the indivisible boldness, strength, with a vast portfolio of exciting momentum, this message is available for download at ourcurrentreality.com. This message was built on the foundations of our ministry, along those very same future-proof principles in the Word of God. This is where boldness begins, OCR Street Ministry.